Hey guys and girls, it's Blackjack with 396 Guitars. Um, we have the Paul Stanley back on, as I said uh, in the last video. The next time you see it, you're gonna, it's going to look a little bit different. We have taped off the neck. I'm going to show you the last fret. Uh, we tape it off and we are going to mark the frets and we're going to sand them down and level them. Uh, it's a kind of a three-step process with taping, then sanding, then you kind of polish them. Uh, you have to mark it with a uh, Sharpie marker, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, you can use any kind of marker. Uh, some guys like the wide markers. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to explain why we do that. Also, before we get going, uh, if you dig what I'm doing, don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate all your support. And a shout out to my brother in Montreal, Jason. This is for you. <laughs> he was busting my chops and told me that I should wear a KISS t-shirt if I'm going to work on a Paul Stanley guitar. Well, in lieu of an old KISS t-shirt, which I can't find, we put the poster up. Uh, let's get to work. And the camera lottery. So as you can see, we have taped off all of the fretboard. Um, I don't know if the camera is picking up on it. Um, we have one fret left right here. And you start with, you know, thick tape and you, as you work down you got to kind of diddle around with it and cut them and cut them in half and the idea is you're you're covering all the wood so you don't get at now this guitar has binding on the side so we have to be very mindful of that the binding goes all the way around and it's you know it, it really is cut into the, the each fret end um, I have safe files for do you know for cleaning up the, the, the fret ends later after this job is completed um, but we just have to be mindful of that. We don't want to go sanding on that um, as much as we can avoid it. Uh, so the way we do this, you can see I'm down to the last little one here. Uh, I started with some thicker tape and worked my way higher up on the fretboard. Um, you just got to cover it. And it's pretty tedious, but not as tedious as the next step. All you're doing is protecting the wood. Try to leave just the fret wires exposed. And what we do, and you may ask, why do we take a Sharpie? Now, I already did all the way down to here. You mark the very top of the fret wire. Okay? And you may ask, some of you know, some of you have done this or had it done on your guitar. Uh, this is how you know, after we sand it, that once those marks are, are disappeared and there's just a little bit left, then you know you've taken off that much material. And then what we do is we check fret, uh, we take the fret rocker again and we check and make sure like we know we have a bunch of rock and frets down here um, previous video and this is to when this marker disappears we know that we've gone far enough seems odd it did to me many many moons ago when i saw this for the first time but this is how we do it. Try not to have tape on the fret wire. My eyes are not what they used to be. The tape is just to protect the, the fret board itself. And I've done a couple of these in my lifetime. Generally, you don't have to if your guitar is pretty stable and you take care of it properly. You shouldn't have a problem with frets being high. But somebody buggered this one up and they tried to do spot leveling down here. From here to here, all of these frets are flat on top. And that's what they would be after you sand them all down. They're going to be flat. Then we have to recrown them and they're going to be completely flat after we sand them down and you're actually taking some material off but what you're doing is leveling them so that they're all at the same height and then 
you take that flat surface and you have to actually put a crown back on it. So it's just a very little tip of the top of the fret is what touches the guitar string. I know this seems tedious, but like I said, this is how we do it. I know this guy right here was really high. So that one is going to be, as we go start sanding, that one is going to disappear before these two do. The marker is going to disappear on that one before the, the one on either side of it did because that's the high fret. So that's why when you know when you've got all of the black marker has almost disappeared completely, you know you have them all, you've taken them all the same amount of material off of every fret. And how do we do that? Some guys like to use bigger ones, shorter ones, mid-sized ones, wider ones. There are ones that are actually made specifically for whatever radius you're dealing with. This works just fine. Okay. The key to this is you start and you don't press. You don't you don't get over aggressive. You just get it on there. You go from one end to the other. Keep it level. You start with, there's three different kinds of uh, sandpaper on this thing. You start with the heavy one. And I can see that one has lost all of its marking and this one still has. So I know that one's still, still cutting off. And you just work from one side of the fretboard to the other. And it doesn't seem like you're doing a lot, but you are. And the proof will be in the pudding when we get done. So I'm not going to show you this entire process because it does take a long time. Like you see, there's a whole bunch right on there still. So I know that's a that's a low fret compared to the one on, on either side of it. You can feel it rocking on that one. smoothed out down there and that's where we had a real problem was higher up on the fretboard so we're almost disappeared up here and you can see faintly there's the material that's coming off and all of the frets are now getting flat we still have some here I'm going to finish this up this part of the process I'm going to pause briefly and then we'll come back for the next step stand by 